Hi, so this is going to be a quick class on mortgage. This is the time of year and sometimes in April throughout the year um, that people receive a letter from their mortgage company saying that they have a shortage. So I'm here to tell you when you buy a home and that mortgage you start out with, there's a great possibility that in years to come, that mortgage amount will change. Now, this is something that people usually don't tell you, but I, the wealth sharer, will share this information with you so you can be a smarter buyer and understand how to allocate your money in your mortgage profile to be able to do better. Okay. So when it comes to your mortgage, when you, let's just say you start with a $2,000 mortgage. Okay. That mortgage is based off of your, um, the cost of the house, plus the interest on the house, plus your escrow. Your escrow is something that you have to Pay attention to your escrow is going to be in your taxes and your hazard, which is your home insurance. And those two combined are two areas that people don't talk about that fluctuates. It changes by what's happening in the economy. It changes by what you have set with your insurance company. It will vary from person to person. It is so important to understand your escrow will change year to year. And even from you know six months versus six months, because if your mortgage company increases your, your escrow, that is because your taxes went up or your home insurance went up, goes up. And that is the part that shocks a lot of new homeowners. I know this because it shocked me as well. I remember back, we bought our first home back in 2007. Now this was right before the fall of the you know economy when it came to home crashes and you know foreclosures and all these things that were happening in the market. And we started receiving checks from our mortgage company. And those checks had us excited, but then we started realizing we were receiving checks because our property taxes went down, which means that our, or rather what, what that meant was that our homeowner's insurance also went down because your in-home insurance is based on the value of your property. So if your taxes go down, that means your value of your house goes down, which means that your homeowner insurance goes down as well. And that is the one thing, again, a lot of people going into homes who parents never own a home or who parents didn't understand what it worked, how it works, was this information was never passed down to you. So I'm giving you guys this education, sharing the wealth about the mortgage and your money so you can not just be educated for yourself, but you can tell others and your children, your family members, your friends how to be able to balance it out over time. And there is a way to balance it out. Okay. So I'm going to put this here. And then we're going to talk about shopping insurance towards the end, because I want to make sure that we understand your escrow is your property tax plus your home insurance. Again, this is great for people who are going to purchase a home or even if you have a house. That it, There's people who are homeowners that don't even really understand this equation, but I want you to understand that this is the part that shifts. It can go up or it can go down. So don't forget your principal of what, you know, on the house that you have to repay, plus your insurance, that is something that, you know, will be consistent in a way, right? Because your principal and your, your interest will shift over time. It will change from year to year based on the, the schedule that is for your 30-year mortgage or if you have a 15-year mortgage. If you don't know this, what you need to know is that when you start paying your mortgage within the first few months, you pay more interest, sorry, in the first few years, you pay more interest than you pay principal. It's usually on the 
half the later half of the loan that it starts to ch shift where you pay more principal than you pay interest. The banks are going to get their money up front because if you choose to leave that house, they're going to get their interest on the front end and then you're going to start over with a new loan. And again, they're going to get their interest on the front end. So you have to understand the banks are really in this because they're making money, okay? They Yes, you get the benefit of owning a house. Yes, that is something that you can create generational wealth with, with, but just know that the banks are also in it to make money. And if you're not um, analytical and you don't really understand the math of it, you can put yourself in a situation where this $2,000 mortgage started off as a $1,500 mortgage and over five years plus or minus, you end up with this mortgage amount and that's $500 extra a month that you never accounted for when you first was doing your budget, okay? Praying that you did a budget when you were thinking about buying a house, okay? If you, you have not, it's never too late to do a budget, whether you are a renter or a homeowner, budgeting, make sure you check out my other video about everything you need to know about budgeting. It is going to change the game for you because you become more organized in how you handle your money and your money will not control you. You will learn to control where your money's going. And I'm going to talk about that as well in this equation. So when it comes to paying for your escrow, know that, again, you might receive a letter that says shortage. And a lot of people don't know what that is. That just means that at the end of the assessment, whether that is at the end of the year or in the beginning of the year, after they pay your taxes and your home insurance, they reevaluate your account. And if you don't have enough money in there to front the cost, they're going to have you pay the mortgage because the mortgage company do not want to front the cost for you in the event that your, your insurance goes up and your property tax goes up. They want you to have the money and pay for it yourself, okay? Because again, they don't want to use their own money for something that is for you. So if you receive a letter about a shortage, that means that you did not put enough money in your account for the previous year. And again, they want to make sure that they're not fronting this money for you. So there's a way to get around that. Every month, you have the option to pay your mortgage plus additional on your principal plus or, or your escrow, extra payments in your escrow. So if you have saw that your property taxes are going up, Again, this varies by neighborhood, by house, by insurance company. There's a lot of different factors, right? Because everybody insurance company is different. Their policy is different. What they have in their policy is different. They might have, you know, you know, flood insurance. They might have, you know, where it is that their, their mortgage company is evaluating the things in their home. So in event of a loss, that stuff is covered, okay? So there's different elements to a house a home insurance that will vary by person to person because everybody's house is different or there's also the point where if you look at your what your mortgage your 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 brokerage or your home insurance is offering and let's just say your house is valued at 600,000 but they want to put the value at 700,000 you can challenge them and bring it down i did that back when we first had our first home and I was able to get the cost down because I was like, I don't need you guys to give me above and beyond. Just give me X amount. So if we need to rebuild, we have enough money. But again, the mortgage company is going to want to exceed the amount as much as they want. So this is something else that you can actually go back to the table and see how they can come down on the value of your home to make sure that you're not paying too much. Okay. So that's another tip. Make sure you write that down. Okay. So when it comes to your monthly payment, you have the option to pay extra, whether you're paying extra on your principal to help cut down the years of interest, or you are paying extra on your escrow. For this conversation, we are talking about your escrow because I want you guys to not have a shortage because here's the thing with shortages. When you're your mortgage company sends you that shortage amount, two things are going to be offered to you. One, they're going to raise your mortgage so they can account for the difference month by month, 
or they're going to give you another option, which is to pay that shortage. Now that shortage could be $500, it could be $1,000, it could be $1,500, it depends. Now, usually they don't give you a lot of time to pay the amount. Usually they give you about two months to pay it up front. Now, if you pay it up front, then your, your, your mortgage amount will not change because you've paid the escrow up front. If you choose not to pay the escrow up front, then you're going to have a higher mortgage payment. A lot of people don't understand how that works. Now, here's the thing. If year by year, you decide to not pay the shortage, you can be in a situation where you actually started off with a mortgage that was 1500 say back in 2019, and today you are at 2000 because we know property values have been going up and up over time, okay? Over the past five years, let's just say four years, we've seen property values skyrocket like we've never seen before. And everybody loves the fact that their property values are going up, but they don't think about the other part. The other part is that your property taxes go up, which means that's going to impact your mortgage. And they don't understand that now your home insurance is going to go up because the value of that house is no longer the same. Okay. It's pretty simple. You know, I'm giving you guys the fundamentals of what you need to know to be properly educated when it comes to your money. Okay. And, you know, some people have a low mortgage and some people have a hefty mortgage, but there's ways that you can keep it consistent from year to year, but it's going to require you to do some work, whether that is renegotiating with your insurance companies or paying extra in the escrow every month. So going back to the extra payments, you can choose to put a extra hundred dollars in your escrow every month or $50 to where by the time they do the shortage calculation, which they're going to do, it's something that every mortgage company does. There is no one that is not doing it because again, they don't want to be fronting the cost of your, your escrow, your property taxes and your home insurance on your behalf. They want their money back and they're going to get it back one way or another, right? You're either going to pay for that increase per month for the next year, or you're going to pay that shortage and that escrow shortage within that two month period. Okay. So understand that you have power to control what is happening within your money. Okay. As a wealth share is my duty to share the wealth so you can build wealth for your family. And that includes generational wealth. So when it comes to navigating the space of money, you have to understand what you're looking at. We'll get into credit cards. I'll do another video of that because the interest rates are out of this world. Okay. And you need to understand what that looks like. So I'll do another video for credit cards management. Again, your money is important because you want to put yourself in a position to where you are in control. Because if you are not balancing out your escrow, you are allowing your mortgage company, your home insurance company, your property taxes to control you. Because that means that when you see this letter and you see your mortgage going up, you didn't plan for that to happen because you didn't know it was going to happen. So you gain control by having the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to make smart, smarter decisions with how you allocate your money. And this will help you to control what is going out. So in your budget, you can put in the, the $50, $100, $200. I'm not giving you a number. I'm just giving you examples. Your situation will vary because everyone's money looks different, okay? So there is it. There is a, a one size fit. There is no one size fit all, but you can use these principles and this knowledge to be able to help you navigate how to control your money. Okay, so shopping insurance. I kind of touched on that, but I want to give you some more power for you to be able to know how to control your money. You have the ability to shop your insurance, okay? And you may find that you might get a policy where you can decrease what you, you are paying for the value of your house. Every insurance brokerage will give you something different or insurance company. They're, they're going to look different, okay? Some people are going to charge more. Some people are going to charge less. You have to decide if you 
pretty much us also understanding what they're giving you back in the event of a claim, right? Because that is something that you want to make sure in the event of a claim, are they going to do me right? All right. Are they going to do you right? You want to make sure that you're going with a company that is responsible in how they treat their customers and they're not treating you like a number. Okay. So you have the ability to shop your insurance that will help you with being able to, um, bring your costs down and that will also decrease your mortgage because you're no longer paying, you know, $5,000 a year for home insurance. And there's a company that's offering you $3,000 a year. That $2,000 um, Delta makes a big difference in your monthly payments. Okay. So I pray that this will be um, more than you are, you expect. And I pray that this will give you the, the knowledge that you need to be able to stand in the authority of controlling your money and not allowing your money to control you. Oftentimes people get themselves in situations financially because they feel like they don't have control. And then they are not experiencing what they want, which is that joy, that happiness, um, being able to feel abundant and they're looking at their money situation, allowing that to dictate their emotions and their feelings. I'm here to tell you there's so much more to life, but I want to be able to give you the tools and resources you need to be able to control how your reality is playing out. You have more control than you know, and I'm going to empower you with the knowledge to be able to do so. So I want you all to put questions in the comments if you have any concerns or have any questions pertaining to your situation because I want to help you be able to be free of doubt, fear, and disappointment, okay? You have the ability to share wealth by creating wealth for your family and I want to make sure that you guys have the their, your cash flow is can now be allocated to the things that's going to help you grow invest in yourself and your family to be able to build wealth. Okay. So you guys all have an amazing day. I pray that you got everything you needed out of this video. And if there's anything else you want me to cover, drop it in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and follow me. There's so much more coming down the pipeline. I'm so excited to do this class for you all and you all be safe out there. Love you. Bye.